yeah, so fortunately, Jets missed out on Watson. Hopefully, Darnold pans out. Only time will tell, though, I should say. Let's get absolutely. to the Jets for yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Let's get to the Jets free agency a little bit right here. Not a whole lot of splashy moves. Rashad Perryman, he's a solid target for Darno. He provides some speed. I don't think he's as good as Robbie Anderson. You know, Robbie Anderson obviously leaves. That's probably the biggest loss for your team. So, you know, whatever. Frank Gore, he's a million years old, a million years old, but he's still productive. The offensive line, I mean, you brought in some players, you know, Connor McGovern, J- George Fant, Alex Lewis, Greg Von Roten. I mean, not a whole lot of big names, but at least you're trying to maybe improve the depth and maybe get some stars in there. I mean, it was. I want to get to the draft in a little bit. We'll talk about the draft once you get done talking about these free agents. But what are your thoughts on the Jets free agency? I thought it was a very solid free agent class. Or, yeah, free agent class. It was uh, the general manager's first free agency. I thought he did very well. He didn't make the big splashy moves, but he didn't need to. He didn't need to overpay for players. The offensive line, Alex Lewis, he re-signed. Uh, Connor McGovern, the Grand Van Roten one was interesting. George Bant. It was, he's definitely trying to make an upgrade on the offensive line. He vowed to do that. He made a promise to Sam Darnold's parents that he would do whatever he could to protect his, their son. And he has done whatever he could. Right now it's come down, now it's going to be up to coaching. But he's also doing a lot of like one year type deals. Like George Pant's deal is a three year contract, but it's essentially a one year deal. Like the gar- all the guaranteed money is in the first year, and then they have easy outs of the contract the next two. So the way he worked for agency, the contracts he got, they uh, upgraded the cornerback position, in my opinion, with Pierre Desir, the corner from Indianapolis. They got C.J. Mosley's right-hand man from Baltimore, Patrick Owasser. Oh. So, Something like that. Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. So they made upgrades. The Brashad Perriman swap for Robbie Anderson is the biggest negative because Brashad Perriman could be a great wide receiver, but Robbie Anderson already had the relationship with Darnold. And when you have that wide receiver quarterback relationship, I, that's one of the more important aspects of an offense. You have to have that relationship with each other. And especially this year with the pandemic, and not being able to go work out. You don't have the OTAs or the mini camps. You don't have all this time to work with each other and try to develop that. you got to go into training camp and get it now. I think that's going to be a problem. But I do like how they didn't have to overpay. The past few years, it seemed like the Jets would overpay for players because they couldn't get good players by giving a market value. The Jets just aren't good enough to do that. That's why they had to overpay for C.J. Mosley. They had to overpay for Tremaine Johnson in the past. They had to overpay for Le'Veon Bell. This year, the new general manager, he's not gonna, he has a price. And this is what he thinks you're worth. And if uh, you want more than that, so just say goodbye. If I had to grade this track, or this free agency class, I'd probably give it about a C plus, B, somewhere in that range. Because it wasn't outstanding by any means, but you filled some holes, you didn't overpay for players, but there's still question marks on the team. Like, did how much did the team really improve? Yeah, yeah, you, that, that's definitely very fair. I like the fact you mentioned about how you didn't really overpay for players. I, I agree with that. Thank you so much for watching this video today. Please also note that the Juice Alert Sports Podcast is not just a YouTube channel. It is available on all podcasting platforms, including Spotify, Google Podcasts, iTunes, and Apple Podcasts. Also, if you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share this content with all your friends. This podcast is my favorite thing in the entire world right now. It is my passion. I want more people to listen to this podcast. I really want this podcast to grow. 
Also, a fun fact about me is that I want to go into the sports broadcasting and media world once I graduate from the University of Toledo, a college in Northern Ohio. I currently am a freshman there right now. I am looking to become one of the next great sports broadcasters and analysts out in the world. And I potentially would like to start my own network if this podcast really truly grows. Or if I fall short of that goal, I would love to work for a big time network like ESPN or Fox Sports 1. I am open to all networks. So if you believe in my dreams and you see or hear my passion through the screen, be sure to tell all your friends about the Juice Lurt Sports Podcast. Stay motivated, you guys. Have a God-blessed day, and I'm out. Thank you.